to Celebration Church Pretoria Online. We are excited to have the opportunity to connect with you through this online platform. Celebration Church Pretoria is part of the family of churches for Celebration Churches International, founded by Senior Pastors Tom and Bonnie Duchelle. The lead pastors for our Pretoria branch are Pastors Dixon, Andy Tai, Katizira. There are various ways that you can stay connected with the church. Connect with us on our various online platforms. Join the church WhatsApp group. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and join us on Zoom for different activities. Let us connect in corporate prayer and fasting every Wednesday, which culminates our domain prayer meetings from 6 to 7 p.m. on Zoom. We encourage you to continue giving your tithes and offerings through electronic funds transfers. We continue to stand in faith, believing that we will be moving to our own building soon. So let us continue giving to our building project fund. For more information and details regarding what has been mentioned, please do not hesitate to send us a message in our inbox. As we continue with our service, please comment and let us know where you are watching from. We invite you now as we praise and worship the Lord together. Good morning, church. We're here to praise the Lord and declare that He has overcome. He has surely overcome. Amen. Amen.
now like to invite you to join us for the word of the day welcome to celebration church pretoria online we are glad that today you made some time to connect with us so this morning we continue with our season of elevation and we thank god for this month of um, october you know the month of october it's the 10th month and last week we were learning about what the number 10 signifies in the bible One of the things we also learn, the number five is made up of five plus five, which is ten. And five is a number that signifies grace. It's a number of grace. Grace. So I'm trusting the Lord that in this month of October, may you experience double grace upon your life. The Bible says in the book of uh, John chapter 1 verse 16, it says, out of the fullness or abundance we have all received all had a share all were all supplied with one grace after another spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing even favor upon favor gift heaped upon gift may this be your portion in this month of october may you in grace in, in, in experience grace upon grace in everything that you do we're going to experience major realignments in our lives as we connect to this grace if this grace abounds in our lives god will help us so this morning what i'm going to do is i'm going to 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 talk on the topic of grace upon grace grace upon grace so our key scripture for this morning will be the book of isaiah chapter 35 this is a a chapter which has got 10 verses Oh, I love the number 10. It has got 10 10 verses and um, it will reveal some things you must experience uh, in this month of October. So, Isaiah chapter 35 verse 1. It says, The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad and the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the rose of the autumn crocus. I declare this morning that as you encounter grace upon grace in your life, that may your season in the wilderness come to an end in Jesus' name. You know, the wilderness speaks of many things. It speaks of a, it is a solitary place. It symbolizes a life of barrenness, dryness, and loneliness. It also symbolizes a wasted life, fruitful, fruit, fruitlessness. It, a wilderness speaks also to be a time of testing. You know, the wilderness, that's where God determines, um, uh, it determines whether God or the flesh are going to ruin your life. You know, I'm trusting God that God, as the grace of God comes in contact with your life, your desert, your valleys will be lifted up. The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 84, uh, in verse 5, It says, blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it spring. The rain also covers it with pools and they go from strength to strength. Each one appears before Zion. Whatever valley you are encountering in your life, as grace abounds in your life, you are coming out of those um, those uh, wilderness um, experiences 
Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 2. That says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. I pray that may you find grace in your wilderness, that you may come out of your situation this morning. Let's continue with our passage of scripture. Isaiah chapter 35. Now we are doing verse 2. It says, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it and the excellence of Mount Carmel and the plain of Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty and splendor and excellence of God. You know, when this grace begins to operate in your life, it begins to initiate change in your life. You begin to see God changing things around for you. So let's look closely at the three things that are mentioned in this verse too. The first is the glory of Lebanon. You know, the glory of Lebanon is the glory of pureness, the glory of righteousness, you know, God, that God wants to give us. You know, in, in, in Lebanon in Bible times, is known for its cedars. You know, the fragrance that you just smell these cedars when you are, you know, around this, um, this forest. You know, I'm believing God that God wants to awaken your sense of smell. God wants to awaken your senses, you know, your senses to righteousness. You know, the purpose of the wilderness is awakening our senses, our sensitivity to the Spirit of God. I'm trusting God that some of you, your sensitivity to God is being awakened this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. The second thing that is mentioned is the excellence of Camel. You know, we, 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 we first hear about Mount Camel in 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 21 to 29. You know, the excellence of Camel, you know, when, 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 when Elijah had the showdown with the prophets of Baal, it was not... Um, it was not, that showdown was not about the fire, but it was Israel proclaimed that the Lord and he is God. So the second awakening that will come in the wilderness, there's awakening for the reestablishing of the Lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of your life. I'm trusting that God is going to, to also awaken your sense of sight, your sense of sight. You know, you know, you cannot get out of the wilderness if you don't have vision. If you don't know how God is going to, 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 where God is going to take you. So I'm trusting God there's a reawakening of our senses. The plains of Sharon. The plains of Sharon, they, these are plains where they used to grow wheat. They used to grow barley. They used to grow um, corn. Here, I'm trusting God that God is awakening your sense for taste. Your sense for appetite. You know, the, he's showing the importance of the word in your life. You know, three, these three crops of the word of God, you know, they, they speak of the word of God, these three crops, the wheat, the bell, and the corn. And for, for a Christian, I'm, I'm trusting God that your appetite for the word, your hunger for the word, your hunger for the things of God is increasing in this month in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's continue. Verse 3. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 3. It says, strengthen the weak hands and make firm, feeble and tottering knees and say to those who are fearful and hasty, with hasty hearts, be strong and fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance and with the recompense of God, he will come and save you. You know, the world, when, when, when the wilderness shows up, three weaknesses in your life are going to be strengthened. So the first thing, there is the strengthening of weak hands. Weak hands, weak hands. You know, those with weak hands are those who are not excelling on the things that they are doing. They are those who are struggling with their careers. They are those who are struggling with their marriages. You are struggling with your studies. You are struggling with your business. I am trusting God that there is supernatural strengthening that is coming to you, coming to your life as you encounter the grace of God, as grace upon grace begin to rest upon your lives the second thing that is mentioned is in isaiah 35 verse 3 is the the strengthening of the feeble and tottering knees you know by definition feeble means weak not strong you know your knees and your 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 your, your knees they they actually make you to be able to stand some of you you have been not standing some of you, you, you the, the, the reason why you couldn't be established in the different spheres that God has put you, 
is because your knees are feeble. They're tottering. You can't stand. I'm trusting God that God is going to strengthen you. You are going to take a stand. You are going to stand. You are going to be established. You are going to be anchored by the word of God in the name of Jesus. You know, the third thing that is mentioned, um, you know, they also talk about hasty and fearful hearts. You know, fear begins to creep in our lives when we begin to feel that we have not achieved uh, the, the, our, our goals and our aspirations. And you see that fear will cause us to be anxious. It will cause us to be unsettled. Some fear that you will not pass. Some you fear you will not find a job. Some you fear that you will not find a bay. Some you fear that you will not be successful. Some even are fearing that COVID might kill you. But fear will not, some of you, you even fear that you can't meet your financial obligations. May you find grace in your wilderness. As you find grace, you will receive comfort, you will receive encouragement, and you will receive strengthening of your hearts. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, you also see that in the book of, um, in the book of Isaiah chapter 35, let's continue, verse 5. It says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame man shall leap like a heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing a song, for the waters break forth into the wilderness and streams into the desert. Oh, I love the word of God. There are four things that will be aligned in your life as you encounter and as, as you begin to embrace grace upon grace in your life. The first thing is the opening of eyes. Opening of eyes, you know, in verse 5. Eyes determine our vision. Because of your blindness, and your, you know, because of your blindness, the vision of your life is distorted, limited or non-existent. And you'll not be able to see what God is doing in this season if you can't see. This is my prayer according to, Isaiah, to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. That Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom, revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets, into the deep and intimate knowledge of him. For the eyes, for, for, for by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know, understand the hope which you were called to. As you begin to allow the grace of God to rest upon your life, your vision will be, will be, will be restored. You know, I'm reminded that the Bible, there's a story in the Bible uh, in Mark chapter 8. There's a man, uh, let me just read from verse 22, uh, at Bethsaida. You know, then he came to Bethsaida and there was a blind man and he said to him, um, the blind man uh, brought to him and he begged him to touch him. So, so he took the man and, uh, by hand and led him out of town. Remember, he could not see. Then he, he, uh, he spit on his eyes and put his hands on him. And he asked him, do you see anything? And he looked up and said, ah, oh, I see men walking like trees. Then he put his hands again and made him look up. And he was restored and he saw something clearly. There's someone, or someone today, you just need another touch from God. You need another touch. As you have another touch from God, you see men as men. You see opportunities as opportunities. Some, some of the things you are looking for, they're just in front of you. But because your vision is distorted, you can't see them. I believe in this season, you will have your vision restored. The second thing is in, in Isaiah chapter 35 verse 5, is the opening of deaf ears. Deaf ears. As a child of God, you must have the capacity to hear the voice of the Lord. God speaks to us in several ways. He speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through his thoughts, through our thoughts. He speaks to us through conversations with other people. God speaks to us all the time. But do you have the capacity to hear? If your ears, your spiritual ears cannot hear, you will not hear what God wants you to, to, to do in this season. I, I, Psalms 32 verse 8. He says, I, the Lord, who instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I'll counsel you with my eye upon you. Don't be like a horse or a mule, which lack understanding, which must, must have their mouth held firm with a bit and a bridle, or else they will not come to you. May your ability to hear the voice of the Lord in this season, may it be activated. May your spiritual ears be able to be opened that you can hear the voice of God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. 
the third thing that uh, we see in, um, in, 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 in um, Isaiah chapter 35 verse 6, it says the healing of the lamb. You know, lameness signify that you are constrained, you are disabled, you are not able to do the things that normally a person can be able to do. I'm trusting God that God is going to take you from your limitations, from the things that have contained you, and God is going to make you do things you have never done before. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 12, it says, So be made strong, even in your weakness by lifting up your tired hands in prayer and worship and strengthen your, your, your weak knees for you keep moving forward on God's paths. All your stumbling will be divinely healed in the name of Jesus. Healing is coming to your house in Jesus' name. The fourth thing that is mentioned in um, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 35 verse 6a, it says, um, loosening of tongues loosening of tongues some of you get ready for your voice to be amplified whatever you speak will, will be established whatever you speak will come to pass some of you you feel that you are not capable of doing things you are not capable of influencing things that your prayers the things you declare you decree you think maybe they don't amount to anything, but your voice is being amplified. Your voice is be, being amplified. When you embrace this divine enablement, your limitations are removed. You know, I'm reminded of the story of Moses in the book of Exodus. You know, when God sent him to, to, to go to the children of Israel. And Moses was saying, uh, God said, go. And Moses began to come up with, uh, with some um, excuses. Let's catch up with them, Exodus chapter 4, verse 10. The Bible says, and Moses, and, and Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither before nor since I've spoken to a servant, but I'm slow in speech and slow in tongue. I don't know what that means. Slow in speech and slow in tongue. Wow, I love the word of God. So the Lord said, who makes a man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing eye, or the blind? If I not the Lord, now go. And I'll be with your mouth and I'll teach you what to say. I love what verse 12 say. And I declare this upon your life. That your mouth was made by the Lord. May the Lord be with your mouth. And may the Lord teach you what to say in this season. In those meetings you are going. In those interviews you are, you are, you are, you are, you are doing. I don't know who I'm talking to. Even as you talk to Bay, God will be with your mouth. And he'll teach you what to, what to say. Oh, thank you Lord Jesus. Let's continue. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 6b. He says, Then the lamb shall leap with a, with a, like a heart, and the tongue of the dumb will, will sing with joy. Then he says, For waters shall break forth into the wilderness, and streams into the desert, and the burning uh, sand and the mirage shall become a pool, and the thirsty springs of water in the haunt in the haunt of jackals where they are resting and shall the grass and the reeds and the brushes the first step to your restoration is water or moisture to begin to quench the thirst and begin to refresh your mental and spiritual body the holy spirit prevents spiritual dehydration some of you have got spiritual dehydration there is dryness but as you allow the word of god as you allow the word of God, God, you know, the Bible says the mirage shall become a, a pool. You know, not the order. Water breaks out. Then the streams begin to flow into form. So the Holy Spirit will begin to cause movement and things beginning to increase in capacity, increase in intensity of the things that you are doing in your life. Notice that it also says the jackals of the desert will live when water begins to rise so there are demons there are things in your life that will are being given an eviction order as the anointing as the grace of god begins to work in your life the demons and the devils do not occupy the same space that the spirit of god is i like what john chapter 8 verse 11 says it says if the spirit of god who raised jesus from the dead lives in you he will raise christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies by the presence of the Holy Spirit that lives in us. You know, the, you, 
you are the physical address of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who lives in you is able to, to quicken your mortal body, is able to quicken whatever is not working in your life, is, can be quickened back to life. The Holy Spirit can empower you to do things supernaturally. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You now the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, now we are in verse 8. It says, a highway shall be there, a way, and it will be called the holy way. The unclean will not pass over it, but it shall be for the redeemed, the wafering men. Wa wafering men. Yes, the simple ones shall not enter, sh shall not err in it and lose their way. I'm telling you that this morning, get ready that the Lord is about to show you a path out of your wilderness. But the way to maintain your victory is you need to stay in the path of holiness, a path of righteousness. You know, the Bible says in the book of um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, it says, so the wisdom given to me from the Lord, I say, you should not live like unbelievers around you who walk with empty delusions. Their corrupted logic has been clouded by their hearts that are far from God and their blinded understanding and deep-seated moral darkness keeps them from the true knowledge of God. You know, as you embrace walking in the path of holiness, that's how you maintain your victory. That's how you keep the victories, the breakthroughs that God has been given you in this season. Let's just go to verse 9. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 9. It says, No lion shall be there, nor shall the ravenous beast be upon it. They shall not be found, but the redeemed shall walk on it. You know what? I love this scripture. This is a statement of deliverance. The devil cannot walk with holiness. Holiness is the believer's protection. It is the believer's protection. Holiness is the path that the devil cannot walk. The devil can, can do all the yelling. He can do whatever he wants, but he can't walk in the path of holiness. If you get off the path of holiness, what you are doing is you enter into a pathway that grants the enemy a foothold in your life. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. May God help us to walk in the path of righteousness. Let's go to the last scripture. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 10. He says, The ransom of the Lord shall return to Zion with singing and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Oh, I love the word of God. May joy and gladness return to your lives in the name of Jesus. May sorrow and sighing, may confusion and pain flee from your life in the name of Jesus. Let me, you know, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 54, verse 4, it says, but he endured the suffering that should have been ours, the pain that we, sh that we should have borne while we thought that his suffering was a punishment sent from God. You know, Jesus was the one who bore your pain and your suffering. He took it to the cross. You don't need to be suffering right now. You don't need to be pain. That's why sorrow and pain have got to flee as you encounter the grace, as you encounter grace upon grace in your life. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me just recap this morning. As the 10th month, we said 10, 10 is 5 plus 5, and we are going to experience double grace as 5 signifies grace. And we did the case study of Isaiah chapter 35 from verse 1 to 10, where we say we are going to encounter grace upon grace in this season. Um, uh, uh, in this, you know, as you encounter grace upon grace in your season, the wilderness is to come to an end. And there are three things that grace will initiate in your life. There's the glory of Lebanon, which is, which is the reawakening of your senses towards righteousness. There's the excellence of, of, of Camel, which is the re-establishment of the Lordship of Jesus Christ in every area of your life. There's the plain of, of, of Sharon, which is the real awakening of your sense of appetite, your hunger and thirst for the word, for the things of God. I see that fire coming on someone this morning in the name of Jesus. And there are areas that will be strengthened. You know, there's the strengthening 
of weak hands, feeble knees, and fearful hearts, God is going to strengthen you. God is going to give you supernatural strength. And there are four areas that will be realigned as we encounter grace upon grace in your life. There's opening of blind eyes. God is going to open your eyes. You begin to see all the things that God has for you in your life. The opening of deaf ears. God is going to open your deaf ears. And there's a, the healing of the lamb and loosening of tongues. The Holy Spirit will empower us to get out of the, our, our desert situations. And we walk in a pathway of righteousness. Holiness is the protector of the, of the, of the righteous. You know, this morning, I'm trusting God that even as I, as I was speaking, that there is healing that is coming to, to someone today. You know, I'm, I'm just sensing there's someone you've been struggling with, 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 with your health. I sense the anointing this morning that God wants to heal you. God wants to heal you. By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. There's someone suffering from depression right now. Your heart is so fearful. Your heart is so fearful. You are, you are depressed. You are depressed. Depression is not your portion. God did not give us a spirit of fear. He did not give us a spirit of timidity, but has given us a spirit of a sound mind. So today I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you this morning that this depression is to be lifted up from you. This anxiety has got to be lifted up from you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, I thank you that this spirit of depression is lifted up. Even this spirit of suicide is broken in the name of Jesus. You are a child of God. Father, I break that spirit. May you be healed. You took all our pain, all our suffering to the cross of Calvary. So Father, I thank you this morning that healing is coming to your home. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I just want to pray for you. Maybe you are there and they, you are struggling with your health. I, I just want you to, to put your hand to the area where you are struggling with your health. I want to pray for you. Father God, I thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. That heals us. Right now, can you receive your healing? By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. Receive the healing power right now. In the name of Jesus. Receive the healing power. Receive the healing power. Receive the healing power. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe that the Lord has healed you. I believe that the Lord has healed you. In the name of Jesus. This morning, I just sense, I just want to pray for someone. There's someone you're trusting God for your permit. You're trusting God for your papers, your permit. I, I, I just hear a permit. May the Lord open a door for you. So, Father, I thank you that in the name of Jesus, Lord, you're the all-knowing God, all-powerful God. Even those permits, those permits, those permits, those permits are released in the name of Jesus. They are finalized. There's someone, they gave you a rejection. Go back again. Go and apply again. Go and apply again. Go and apply again. In the name of Jesus. There's someone, that job that you, you, you didn't get because of your permit. Go again. God is making a way for you. So Father, I thank you that Lord, limitations have been broken. As your grace, as grace upon grace is resting upon our lives. Father, we thank you that there is acceleration in our lives. There is acceleration in our lives. There is acceleration, there is a quickening. As you allow the Spirit of God to begin to work in your life, as you allow the Spirit of God to begin to work in your life, there is a quickening, there is a quickening. Dead things are coming back to life in Jesus' name. Oh, sharabasata kamanda basete kemenda. Yerere ketende bosoto koromonda. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, the cross of Calvary is where Jesus took away all our pain. He took away our sins. He took away all our infirmities, our transgressions. They were nailed to the cross. So today, maybe you are here today, you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. I want to introduce you to the man who gives you access to this grace we have been talking about this morning. Grace upon grace. As you allow him to be the Lord of your life, this gives you access to grace. So today, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Maybe you have never given your life to Jesus Christ. We want to pray with you this morning. And there's a certain group of people 
you have backslidden. You, you know you have given your life to Jesus Christ before, but you are not where you are supposed to be. Even if you are to die today, you are not sure about your, 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 your final destination. But we want to pray with you as well. So just put your heart, your, your, your hand to your heart, and I want you to lift up your, your right hand and just repeat after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the Lord of my life. I thank you that you died on the cross for me. You took all my pain, my suffering, my sins away. And Lord Jesus, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I surrender my life to you. I surrender every aspect of my life. So whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I thank you for your blood that has given me a new life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let me just pray for you. Father God, we thank you for you are our God. Even we thank you for this month of grace upon grace. May we experience grace. May we experience grace. May we experience grace. Because of your grace, Lord, we'll come out of our wildernesses. We'll be strengthened. We'll be able to do powerful things for you, O oh God. So, Father, we thank you for this message. That even we thank you for people who have been healed. Father, we pray that, Lord, continue to, 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 to have your grace rest upon our lives. Thank you for this week. Thank you for this month. We embrace this grace upon grace in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I believe there's someone we prayed for this morning. You have just received your healing this morning. Please send us an email on the numbers that are shown on the screen. And also, you can also send us a WhatsApp. We want to share these testimonies. They say we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Bring us these testimonies. And I believe that the Lord is doing great things for us in this month. Otherwise, God bless you. And may the Lord continue to watch over you. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you have been blessed by this message. Remember to share this message with others and meditate on the word during the week. We look forward to connecting with you again this week in our cell and prayer meetings. Join us again next week for our next Sunday service. Have a blessed week.